Thank you.
would say, come on to my altar. Come on to my altar with your sacrifices. Come on, come on to my altar with your praises. Come on to my altar and you will see my hand move upon your life. But you need to come unto me. Come unto me and come on my altar and watch what I will do. And when you come unto me, he says, come unto me, come unto my altar and bring your sacrifices. Bring your sacrifices of praise. Bring your sacrifices of worship. And the hand of God will be on your heart. The hand of God will be on your life. The hand of God will be on your family. But you need to come unto the altar. Come unto me and watch what I will do. The Lord says, come unto me. Come to my altar and bring your sacrifice. Bring your sacrifice of praise and watch what I will do. Aren't I the King of Kings? Aren't I the Lord of Lords? I say, come unto me. Come unto my altar and watch what I will do. Because I am the mighty God. I am the holy God. And I say, come unto me. Come unto my altar and watch what I will do. Because I am the mighty God. I am the holy God. Give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
this place with your own music. Each of you will come with your own tune. And I would say that as you would play together, bring that together in my house, say of God. Not, not the house of four walls, not the house with doors and windows, but into my house. The house of Israel, those who struggle with me, say of God. And then shall there be a great noise go abroad to the land. Then there shall come together, not just a unity, but something that will grow that's much larger than that could ever be.
that you would receive the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you love Jesus, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was very weak. If you love Jesus. Dinner will be supplied. 
And, uh, and then we'll have the evening service, and Nancy's going to be bringing down the glory of God. And Jesus is speeding up tonight so I can get to tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then on Sunday, my dad is going to be ministering. Hallelujah. My dad is almost 82. Wow. And he says, I'm trusting the Lord for a Caleb anointing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My dad recently came to live with us because my dear mother passed away. Some of you, you know that. My mother passed away. It was truly the hardest thing I've ever faced in my life because I was as close to my mom as a son could be. She was my Daniel Nash. Wow. She prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. We had some other prayer warriors that prayed along with her. But she was, uh, she was there for every stage of my life. And she has seen me healed. She has seen me restored. She has seen me delivered. She, every stage since I was a little wild kid. All the way up and out of my 50s, my mom was there. She's with Jesus tonight. She's watching. Amen. Amen. So my dad will be bringing a very special Mother's Day message. You don't want to miss it on Sunday. And we're so thankful that my dad is going to be a part of our ministry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love my dad. And uh, we've been really been able to spend a lot of time together that we didn't get to before because he was in Ohio. I told him recently, I said, Dad, I've seen you more in the last few months than I have in the last 20 years. Because he lives in our house. And he's always afraid. He goes, oh, I don't want to be a bother. He said, Dad, you're not a bother. You're a blessing. We're receiving the blessing of God because you're in our house. The Bible says if you give water to a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. So we're feeding them really good. So we really get a blessing. I should say, Diane is feeding and really good. She's going to receive a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, we're so excited. Uh, just let me share a few little things before we get rolling here. We're so excited that he's here because he's been speaking, my dad has been speaking to me and reminded me of that call, I believe, that's on my life for a Bible school. And the Lord spoke to us about a building, and actually we're headed to Syracuse to oh, speak yeah. for my attendance uh, not too long ago. And the Lord spoke to my wife in an inner audible voice and said, prepare yourself, I'm going to give you a building. Prepare yourself, I'm going to give you a building. And uh, so we said, okay, Lord, if that's what you want, we, we been playing setup, you know, you know what I mean. When I set up, you gotta go to a hotel and bring in all of our stuff. It's backbreaking and agonizing, and it's no fun. So I said, Lord, we want to have a place where we can start a Bible school. We can have conferences, many conferences, right. the rent space. And so we were driving. To make a long story short, we were driving to a town called Newark, which is about 30 minutes from here. It's not far from Palmyra. And we were in the Walmart, and the Lord said, Steve, get out your phone and put in Pentecostal churches. And I'm like, why would I look at Pentecostal? So I said, okay, I'll do it. He said, go look at these churches. So I went to the first one. I said, that looks like a beautiful congregation. And blessed them in Jesus' name. Went to the second one, and the building was for sale. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I never would have known that. It was tucked away in a neighborhood. I never would have seen it if God didn't speak to me while I was at Walmart. Yes, God speaks at Walmart. <laughs> so we went, got the number, and called, and they said, someone already has the building. It's under contract. We're sorry. I said, well, if anything changes, please let us know. And my dad said to me, that's your building. Yeah. And just pray. If it's meant to be, it will happen. Something yeah. to that lines. We received a call not long after that. The building 
is now available again. That Ooh. someone wanted to gut the building and turn it into a, an apartment complex, yeah. a church into an apartment complex. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not going to be an apartment complex. Yeah. Hallelujah. And so he said, Lord, what are we going to do? We don't have one penny toward this. Well, maybe a few pennies. But <laughs> nothing substantial. And so the Lord worked it out and, and gave us like prophetic words. One person sent me a text message and said, Peter got out of the boat and said, Lord, can I walk on water? And Jesus said, come. And you're asking right now, is this you, Lord? And the Lord says, yes, Lord, it's me. Walk on the water, Steve. Amen. And so we trusted the Lord, and within two days, substantial gifts came in. Amen. Right before we were going to place our offer, somebody was going to bid on it. Again, they wanted to turn it into a workshop. <laughs> well, Jesus is a carpenter. Yes. <laughs> but the seller went with us. Oh, and we put in an offer, and... Uh, the building now is under contract with Refuge Ministry. <laughs> so our next conference, which is the Refuge Ministry's fall gathering, will be there. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. It's a beautiful building, and it has almost two acres there, and this huge open field. I said, Lord, I know what's going on in that open field. Uh, Bible school. <laughs> and a larger place to accommodate people for conferences. We're going to start out with the building that we have. It's a beautiful building on the inside. Outside is beautiful. needs a little bit of paint, but we don't mind a little hard work. People will come alongside of us and help us. Amen. And uh, We're very excited about that. And uh, we're still raising funds for that. The Lord is still going to uh, you know, supply all of our needs with that. But we're excited that the building's ours. I got a call from a lawyer today regarding it says, I'm doing all your paperwork. Congratulations on your building. God is a good God, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. 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 I have more to share on that, but I'm going to wait till the fall gathering to share more details about that. We have our offering basket right over there. Uh, you can just throw it in as you feel led. We don't like to uh, go over, you know, talk about that a lot, but we do have needs for the conference. If God, uh, Places on your heart to give, you can just place it right in there. You can write checks to Refuge Ministry. Yeah. If you want to help with your registration, or if you didn't get a chance to do it, just throw it in there. Amen? Amen. So, Father, we thank you once again. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you once again, Father. That you are here. That your presence is here. And I thank you, Father. You're going to touch, touch, touch in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord gave me a word tonight. Occupy till I come. Amen. Occupy till I come. Nancy, I told my my told my dad in the sanctuary right above the pulpit on the wall is gonna be a sign that says occupy yes. till I come. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Woo! I'm feeling excited tonight. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to talk about that tonight. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. And it says in verse number 8, Then he sent out a dove to see if it could find dry ground. But the dove found no place to land because the waters were still too high. So it turned to the boat and Noah held out his hand and drew the dove back inside. Seven days later, Noah released the dove again. This time toward the evening, the bird returned to him with a fresh olive leaf in its beak. Noah now knew that the water was almost gone. A week later, he released the dove again, and this time it did not come back. Hallelujah. So here we see a dove that was released from Noah's ark, and first it had no place to land. 
It did not have a place where it could land and be comfortable, a place where it could nest and stay. And so it came back. And I want you to know that in many places around the country, the Holy Spirit wants to land. Yes. Yeah. But he has no place to land. Yeah. He has no place to rest. He has no place to nest. But the Lord is looking for a people. Yes, he is. And he's looking for a place where he can come and he can land. Amen. Where he can abide. Where he can dwell. And where he can nest. And I say to the Lord tonight, Jesus, Holy Spirit, come and nest yes. in the Finger Lake region. Yes. Come and nest yes. in my life. Yes. Come and nest in our ministry. Come and nest in our home. Yes. And every ministry around the country and around the world that desires Jesus, yes. Yes. Lord, come and rest. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord is looking for a place that he can dwell. He's looking for a place where he can nest. And he's looking for a people where he can come and rest. Hallelujah. Amen. We always set out what I call a Jesus chair. And Sister Janae, I'm not sure where she is, but Sister Janae always decorates their shoes. <coughs> always decorates this, this chair for us. And you say, why would you put a chair? We put a chair because it's a symbolic gesture that we're asking Jesus to come in and rest. Amen. We're asking Jesus to walk through that door Amen. and come in and rest and to dwell. We're seeking not for the dove to come and just land once. We want the dove to come and stay. Amen. Hallelujah. And to bring forth the olive branch, to bring forth life. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to bring forth the anointing. That's right. Amen. To bring forth the presence. Yes. To bring forth the glory of the Lord. And so we say, Jesus, come in and rest. Some of you know this testimony, but I feel like I need to share it for those that have never heard it before. It's so profound to me, and it always reminds me of the promise of God that he will come and rest if you're hungry. We were in Michigan and we started a gathering there in the Holiday Inn. First it was in the Best Western. And in the Best Western on a Thursday night, we were having services. And we were asking Jesus to come and rest and we set a chair out for him. We set a chair out for Jesus as a symbolic gesture that he was welcome to come in and not just visit, but to habitate. Yes. And one particular Thursday, the Lord came in with his presence very, very strong, and I was down on my knees, and I was kind of hiding behind the pulpit. And everyone was, excuse me, was just welcoming the Lord to come. They were welcoming. Jesus, come in. Jesus, come in. And my wife was sitting there. And you have to understand, my wife is kind of shy. Some people are very, like, Sister Janae is very outgoing. That's why she's in charge of our hospitality. <laughs> Some people are kind of shy. My wife is kind of shy until you get to know her a little bit. And she's not one to say, well, the Lord said this or the Lord said that. Only once in our 26 or 27 years of marriage, did she ever say this to me? And she said, Steve, when you were on your knees behind the pulpit and you were inviting Jesus to come in and rest, she said, with my physical eyes, I saw Jesus walk through the wall. I saw Jesus with my physical eyes walk through the wall he came in, he sat in his chair, and he rested. He looked straight at my wife 
like he was saying, I would love to talk. I want to share with you. And I said to my wife, I questioned her a lot. I said, was this an inner vision? She goes, no, I seen him with my physical eyes. I said, did you see Jesus like I see you? You know, so we as Pentecostal charismatics have visions. I want to know if it was one of those flaky visions or if it was, I mean, physically, she said, and she would never lie about such a thing. My, my, my wife is very honest. She's never said that before. She's never said that since. She said, Steve, I was just as shocked as your face right now. I saw Jesus with my physical eyes. I was not sleeping. He walked through the wall. He went to his chair. He sat and he rested. And he smiled. Why? Because he found a place where he was appreciated. He found a place with the people that were hungry. And God did some incredible things in those meetings. Well, once we get our building, we're starting Thursday night holy fire meetings. And we're going to be contending every Thursday night, as well as conferences that we have, for Jesus to come in New York. Come off the I-90 and come in with visitation and habitation. Hallelujah. You know, Jesus liked to visit Bethany. Bethany, if you look at a map, it's about two miles from Jerusalem. To get to Bethany, you'd have to go by the Mount of Olives, go up over the hill and down to the other side to Bethany. And Jesus liked to get out of the city and he liked to go to Bethany. Through the Mount of Olives. Why did Jesus like to go to Bethany? Because of Mary Martha and Lazarus. They made him feel so welcome. He could just let down his hair. Just kind of be at ease. Kind of just relax. You know what I mean? Yes. And he felt comfortable there. So whenever Jesus was in the region, he went to visit. It was Bethany where his feet was anointed. It's where Lazarus was raised from the grave. Jesus did mighty exploits. But the greatest thing that Jesus did in Bethany was give people friendship in his heart. Amen. Can you imagine Jesus sitting there in Bethany, in Martha's house, just loving the people and feeling so comfortable that he was like, anytime I'm in the area, anytime I'm in Jerusalem, I'm going to walk through the Mount of Olives. I'm going to walk up over the hill and I'm going to Bethany. And I said, Lord, could we not be like Martha, Mary, and Lazarus? Yeah. Could we not be like those ones that would make you feel so comfortable and so at ease that you would come and that you would dwell, that you would abide with us? Amen. See, that's what meetings are all about. We know some traveled from Cape Cod to be here. Some yeah. came from Maryland. Yeah. Some came from Germany. The greatest thing that they could receive, all of us could receive, is Jesus personally coming yeah. and touching us. I'm so hungry for more than three points in a poem and a cup of coffee. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I want Jesus to come and to dwell. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you what, you won't have to do any sensational advertising. You don't have to bring in a big, well-known yeah. speaker. Yeah. Jesus will come where he's appreciated. Right. Amen. And often Amen. he'll overlook the big city and he'll go into the little Bethany. Yes. Because he's appreciated and he's wanted. Yeah. And so we say tonight, Jesus, you're wanted. Yeah. You're appreciated. Yeah. Come and dwell with us. Yes. Come and dwell with us. Come and dwell, Lord Jesus, with yes, us. Lord. We so want you. Luke chapter 19, verse 13 says, Occupy till I come. Mm -hmm. Some people think that means stay busy witnessing until the rapture happens. But my spiritual dad, Wade Taylor, 
And my sister in the Lord, Nancy, taught me something else, something far deeper. That we are to worship the Lord. We are to adore Jesus and to love him. We're to occupy, have our services. But when Jesus comes, we stop what we're doing and we acknowledge him. We occupy until he comes. So we're going to keep having gatherings and conferences. And we're going to occupy until he comes. Can he bring another visitation to New York State? Can he come and habitate? Can he come and dwell? Do we truly appreciate him? Does he feel comfortable? Will he walk off the I-90 and come our way? He's thinking to himself right now, is there any place that I can go? Is there anyone that will make me feel welcome? Who appreciates me tonight? And we say, Lord, we appreciate you. Yes. Appreciate you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We desire you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the 1950s, there was a very special Bible school. And in this Bible school, Walter Butler was one of the teachers. And a couple of the students, you may have heard their names, Bob Muffer and Wade Taylor. And Wade speaks about, in the 50s, this tremendous move of the Spirit that happened in chapel. It was a tremendous move of the Spirit. Where the Lord literally took over the chapel services for over two weeks. Hallelujah. He moved. Yes. And they began to show up early before chapel and begin to pray. You know God's moving when people show up early to pray. Amen. Students came early. And God began to move in such an incredible way in those meetings that classes were canceled. And they went with God. Often they were in services from morning all the way to evening. And then in the evening they would start up again and often go to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Some of the things that happened in this great move of God is that a state highway patrol showed up because the roof was on fire. And so he got there and said the roof is on fire and he realized there was no fire. It was the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord set that place on fire with his Shekinah glory. Can you imagine being in meetings where the Shekinah glory of the Lord comes in such a tangible way that literally the police department shows up because they see flames coming off the roof? Could there be flames that could come off the roof tonight here during this conference, during this sessions tomorrow? Could the flames of revival, the flames of visitation, could they come? God began to move. New songs began to burst forth in the chapel services. There was one particular girl, it was said that she was afraid of her own shadow, but God decided to use her. God likes to pick the unqualified ones because they're the ones that will depend on the Lord. Remember, we're not qualified, but the Lord is qualified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And often he doesn't call the qualified, Amen. but he qualifies the call. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. And she stood up in the chapel service and she pointed over. And as soon as she pointed, someone burst forth with a new song. And then she pointed over in this direction and someone began to sing. The full song of Solomon began to be sung spontaneously. The bride the bridegroom and the Shulamite are the daughters of Jerusalem. They began to be sung. It was a, they called it, Walter Butler called it a cantata. 
It was as if they practiced for a whole year. It was such an incredible, incredible move that literally students were singing parts of the Song of Solomon. Shulamite bride was singing. Daughters of Jerusalem were singing. And the bridegroom was singing over the chapel service. Incredible move of God. Such a move of God that the students asked that the Coke machine in the dormitory be removed. Now there's nothing wrong with Coke machines, but there was such a fear of the Lord and such a sensitivity that the students said, this Coke machine is a distraction. We don't want to look at its light. The only light we want is the light of God. And they actually removed the Coke machine from the dormitories. Such a fear of God that came into the service. A reverence. They said you could smell roses throughout the chapel service. Roses, the smell of roses. There were no roses there, but the rose of Sharon showed up. The rose of Sharon came with visitation. The rose of Sharon came with habitation. And you could smell roses throughout the campus. I've been asking the Lord that the rose of Sharon would come into the meetings. That the fragrance of the Spirit would come. Hallelujah. The fragrance of the Spirit would come. Hallelujah. They cultivated the very presence of the Lord. And because of that, they were willing to stay in that chapel service all day long. Hallelujah. There was a fountain of new wine that broke out in the chapel. Where literally there was a place in the chapel where new wine was bubbling forth. And they had a cook at the school, and he was in a backslidden state. There were 200 students in the school, and they went and got the cook and brought him to where the new wine was coming out of the floor. And literally someone went like this. Now, this is not a flaky thing. This is a genuine, true fountain oh, yeah. wow. of new wine that was coming forth. Wade spoke about this fountain of new wine where people literally received the joy of the Lord. And someone reached down and went like that and went like that to the cook. And immediately, he was knocked to the floor. Mm-hmm. He was so transformed that he literally gave his heart back to the Lord. And years later, Wade spoke about how he still was serving the Lord. Brother Taylor spoke about how this fountain of new wine, how much it touched his life personally. And I asked the Lord, Lord, if you can bring a fountain of living water to that school in the 50s. Can you not do it in the end times? Can you not bring living water that would quench the thirst of those that want more than church as usual? More than playing house of God? Father, bring your living water. Bring your new wine. Hallelujah. It was in that place that Wayne said that he was caught up. Literally, he was caught up. Where the Lord caught him up. Hallelujah. And ministered to him in a very powerful way that changed his ministry. There are services that are so powerful. And I'm not talking about a normal conference. I'm talking about meetings and gatherings that are so powerful that God can catch you up in the spirit and literally change your life forever. I said, Lord, can we have meetings like that? Or you would catch us up in the spirit. I tell you, people would come running from all around. Patty Hammond, which I absolutely love, she went to a certain church and they warned her, don't go to this church. Because there's no one that comes. There was only like five people. And it was a huge church. 
Now, if you have a huge sanctuary of, say, a thousand people, and there's five people sitting there, spread out, not even together, it looks like slim pickets. <laughs> and so people said, don't go. Don't go, don't go. But she said, the Lord called me to go, and I'm going. Amen. So she showed up at the meeting, and she began to preach, and there was a hunger that began to come forth from that meeting. I don't remember if it was the first or the second night, but she said Jesus came and walked in the meeting. He personally came and was seen with physical eyes. Jesus came and walked in the meeting and revival broke out. Guess what happened the next night? No seats left. Wow. See, when it's about a man or a personality, it falls apart. But when it's about Jesus coming in, then Jesus comes in. He will share his glory with no one. But Jesus came into the meeting. Jesus came into the meeting. And they had revival services every single night for like a, I think it was two weeks to a month she was there. And the only thing Hattie Hammond would have to do is say the name of Jesus in the presence of God. She really carried that special anointing, the special presence of the Lord. But we spoke about this Bible school. And since it happened in the 50s, I feel like I can freely share about it, but the school decided at the time that they wanted to upgrade the school and that they were going to go to degrees. Oh. It's going to be about education. They wanted to start teaching science and social studies and economics and all of that. And so the seven teachers that had the tremendous presence of the Lord left, and seven academic teachers came. And the school began to change. There's an account in Ezekiel how the glory of the Lord backed off and went to a wall and then went and lifted further off to a hill. And Walter Butler was called to stay. And Walter Butler, in one particular class that he was in, Literally, the presence of God came on him. And he slowly began to back out the door of the classroom. And he reenacted. It's hard to describe with words what exactly happened. But in the spirit, he reenacted. He became a prophetic utterance of the broken heart of God. And he began to slowly back out and said, do you want me? Do you care that I'm leaving? Do you want me? Slowly began to back out. Do you want me? Do you appreciate me? Do you want my presence? And it was like Hosea shows the broken heart of God. And Walter was very broken and he slowly backed all the way till he stepped outside the back door. When he stepped outside the back door, there was an explosion of the presence of God in the meeting. Hallelujah. Where literally utterances went forth about God's broken heart. It was a very special presencing of the Lord. A very unique visitation where it showed the broken heart of God. There's been meetings there's been Bible schools, there's been churches, there's been ministries that once welcomed the presence of the Lord. It was like a Bethany. And suddenly, they began to replace Jesus with something else. They began to take him for granted. They didn't appreciate him anymore. And Jesus slowly withdraws himself and he wants to know, is there anyone that wants me? Is there anyone that desires me? My heart is broken. I want my bride. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yes. 
I want my bride to love me. Come away with me, my love. Can anyone hear me? Asks the Lord. And he wants to know, is there someone that loves him enough? He was saying, ask me to stay. Ask me to stay. And unfortunately, because of academics, the presence of God lifted. And there's been many schools after that that have made that same mistake of not going with what the Lord wants. In 1958, in that same meeting where Bob Mumford and Wade Taylor was in there. Wade said, Lord, if you want a place, if there would be a place where you can be Lord, I make myself available unto you. And he said it was that special day in 1958 that Pinecrest Bible Training Center was born. That was the Bible school, for those that don't know. Mm -hmm. The brother Taylor was the president of the one that I went to. That school changed my life. Yes, uh, yes. In the early 90s especially, there was a tremendous presence of the Lord. I remember when God moved so much that all the chairs in the small chapel was pushed to the back wall yeah. and God began to move. Yeah. I remember when classes were canceled. I remember in classes when God began to move so much that there were students waiting to get into their class, but they couldn't get in because Jesus interrupted the schedule. I remember being in meetings that were so full of the presence of God that literally I could barely contain myself. I still remember when God moved in such a powerful way. When I first went to Pinecrest at 19 years old, I was like a, a little carnal, so to speak. I was the pastor's son, and I would sleep up in the sound room as dad was preaching, I'm ashamed to say. I didn't raise my hands during worship. Went through a lot of stuff as a kid. One particular day, my mom said, Steve, why don't you just go to Pinecrest and pray? I'm like, well, I'm not going to be a minister, that's for sure. <laughs> my father's a minister, my mother's a minister, her father was a minister, his mother was a minister. Not going to be a minister, but I'll go and I'll pray. So I went and I sat in the chapel service and I'm like, whoa! And literally the, the veins in people's necks were popping out. They were singing. I still remember the song, No Other Name But the Name of Jesus. And I thought, whoa, where am I? <laughs> then we dismissed and we went up to lunch and all the students were talking about Jesus all the time. Jesus this and Jesus that. And then there were all these words that I didn't understand. Cultivation, impartation, quickening. What are these words? I remember complaining one day, saying, I don't understand anything that these people are saying. And then I said, is that all these people? I thought to myself, being as spiritual as I was, is that all these people do is talk about Jesus? <laughs> I was a very lukewarm, apathetic Christian. But God began to pour out his spirit in the chapel services. And one particular chapel service in my very first year, God broke out with a spirit of rejoicing and dancing. Now, we had a Pentecostal church, and there were people that occasionally danced, but there were one or two. Peer pressure was great at Pinecrest because everybody was dancing. Not one or two. Everybody was red hot for God. Everybody was in love with Jesus. And I sat in the 
the back. Well, I stood in the back because all the chairs were taken. Pushed to the back. Everybody's dancing like David danced. Hallelujah. And I was holding up the wall. I was afraid the wall was going to come down. So I was holding up the wall, and I just, I was scared. Hallelujah. But suddenly the presence of God hit me. And I wanted so bad to go out there and dance. <laughs> but I was afraid. And suddenly a student, there were a hoo hoo, and it came over to me, yanked my arm, <laughs> pulled me out. <laughs> and as soon as they pulled me out, I started dancing and running. I was immediately set free of lukewarmness and apathetic <laughs> spirit. I danced right. so much and so wild. I spoke in tongues and raised my hands and waved my... It was like somebody just got out of jail for 19 years. I didn't care about what anybody thought. I was reborn. And I danced so much that literally, I say, my dogs were barking. <laughs> my calves hurt so bad. And literally the next day, I came into chapel limping like this. <laughs> and all of my friends were laughing, going, yes. God, we really got you, Steve. I saw you out there dancing. <laughs> He got the lukewarm wall holder out there on the floor. And then I got the bright idea. After dinner time, I can go by that giant of the faith, Wade Taylor. And I can go in his office and have him pray for me for five minutes. What you don't know about me is I was last to be chosen for everything. In high school, my high school teacher said, I know who's going to succeed in this class. The greatest ones in this class succeed, and I know who's not going to succeed. And he looked straight at me. I was broken. I was hurting. I was wounded. I had scars. I had no confidence. And I went into Wade Taylor's office. He said, you got to come over to this special spot. <laughs> not in the spot. And he took my hands and he said, I pray that Steve would have the gift to speak from his heart and the gift to write books. I could do neither. Neither. I couldn't speak and I could not write. I didn't even remember what an adverb was. <laughs> and I went nightly to his office. And for whatever reason, that man took a special interest in me and encouraged me. And I felt fire go through my hands and into my chest. And often, I would go up to my dorm room and I would go into the night to shut the lights off and lay on my bed and I'd weep. Because I felt the manifest presence and I heard the Lord say, Steve, I've called you. I'm like, Lord, you called me? How can I do anything? He says, through my strength, I can do all things. Amen. And for the next 20 years, all the way up to Brother Taylor's passing, he encouraged me in the Lord. He became a true spiritual father. And my life was changed. And I think to myself, is there another little Steve Porter that I can find that has no confidence and speak the word of God into him or into her. Because if God can take a rejected kid who had no confidence and have him hold a microphone today, all glory be to God. All glory be to God. And what can God do for you? He's called you for more than what you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And so I say to the Lord, Father, I want to occupy until you come. I want to occupy until you come. And Lord, I don't want you to ever become wounded and hurt because I'm lazy in spirit or I'm apathetic or I'm just about having a having a, a social club type of thing. I don't want that. I want you, the king of all glory, I want your train to fill the temple. I want you to set up your throne in my life. I want you to set up your throne in our meetings. I want you to come and rest and change people's lives. Can he not do that? I'm determined more than any other time. I'm determined with all of my heart that we will cultivate the presence of God. We'll invite the Lord to come to the Finger Lakes. And we will not grieve his spirit. Walter Butler came to this area. Hattie Hammond came to this area. John Wright Follett came to this area. Charles Finney came to this area. Daniel Nash came to this area. Wade Taylor was in this area. Giants of the faith that were far greater than us came through this area and sowed into this area. Yes. Can we not dig up the wells? Yes. Come on. Come on. Can we not have a habitation of his glory once yes. again? Hallelujah. Can we not elevate Jesus and hide behind the cross so it wouldn't be about a big shot coming in, but it would be about Jesus yes. coming in. May he get all the glory. Yes. May he light our yes. roof on fire. Yes. And bring visitation. Yes. Yes. Bring a habitation. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 6, it says, But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Yes. Or the son of man that thou visited him? Lord, come and visit us. Come and visit us. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 21 says, And the Lord visited Hannah. Lord, come and visit Canandaigua. Amen. Come and visit this lake once again. Hover over the face of the deep. Come and visit Newark. Come and visit Palmyra, Wayne County. Ontario County and all the Finger Lake region. Come, Father, and visit. Thank you, Jesus. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 7, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. How many people know there's a lot of people that are captive? Many people are captive to dead religion. And they need to experience freedom. They need to experience the master and his manifest presence coming. Thank you, Jesus, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. The Lord wants to come in this region and turn away their captivity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I believe that we can go on and on and on tonight, but I'm going to end right there. The Lord's prompted me to end because I want to have a little time of prayer here before we and tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Occupy till I come. He's looking for a bride that will occupy, that will contend, contend for an habitation of his glory. What he did in the 1950s, can he not do it? Can he not do it? For he's looking for a Bethany in our day. Is there a Bethany that he can come and rest? 
Is there a place that he can come and dwell? Is there a place and a people that will worship him? Is there a place that will adore him? The Lord asks, do you want me tonight? Do you appreciate my presence? Do you want me? Do you want me in your life? Do you want me in your home? Do you want me in your church? Do you want me in your city? Asks the Lord. For I will come and I will move. I will brood. I will habitate. And when I come, I will cleanse, says the Lord. Like a mighty wind that blows, I will cleanse my church. For I desire a holy church, says the Lord. I desire a pure heart that they may see me. I desire a pure river that would once again flow in this region. I desire pure waters, not polluted waters for man. But I desire that there would be a river that would flow from my throne. I desire a river like the river that flowed through Eden. That others could come and drink from the well that never runs dry. But man has polluted the rivers in the past with taking my glory unto themselves. I'm looking for a humble and a holy bride. Will you be my spotless bride? Will you humble yourself? Will you ask me for a contrite spirit? Will you refuse to take the glory under yourself and build up a ministry? Instead, would you build up my name and my kingdom? be seen? Would you not allow others to worship a man but worship the king of kings instead? For I'm looking for a people, says the Lord, that will worship me. That will humbly worship we say, Lord, we respond to that word. We respond to that word. We desire to be a pure river. Any pollution, burn it out of us, Lord. Burn out the drops. Create in us a clean heart. Restore us, Lord. That we would be a pure bride, broken of ego, broken of sensational advertisements. Father, let your fire burn in our hearts. Light your bride on fire tonight, Lord. A fresh touch. Fresh touch. You desire a fresh touch of the Lord. You desire a fresh anointing, a fresh refilling of the Spirit. 
We want to ask you to get out of your seat and meet me down here. We would love to pray for different ones tonight, those that want that special touch of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 You want that special touch? Stand to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray, Jesus. I want a fresh touch from you this weekend. Lord, rekindle my fire. Let there be fire shut up in my bones. Rekindle the embers that burned within me in times past. Lord, give us a fresh anointing. For there's the spirit of longing that God is giving to his bride in these end times. A spirit of longing after Jesus. Receive the spirit of longing and bridal love in Jesus' name. Touch. In the name of Jesus, touch. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Touch in the name of Jesus. A spirit of longing, a spirit of longing. Hallelujah. Touch in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Touch. Just you and Jesus right now. Yes. 
Thank you.